الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله my brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's given us the tawfiq to come to the masjid today, Yom al on Saturday, where we can be anywhere else. But walillah, Alhamdulillah, we've been given the tawfiq to come to the masjid on this day. Jazakumullahu khairan. We know that marriage is an important aspect in our deen. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us with it, whereby he said, فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَا وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعَ فَإِنْ خِفْتُ مَنْ لَا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدًا Marry that which, that which you want from women or marry women two, three or four and if you fear that you cannot be just between them then one. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not command except or He does not command something except that He is pleased with it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابَ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ الْبَاءَ فَلْيَتَزَوَّجْ فَإِنَّ أَغَضُّ بِالْبَصَرِ وَأَحْسَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ رواه البخاري ومسلم من حديث عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنهما O youth, whoever among you is able to get married, then he should do so. For it helps lower the gaze and, protect, and protects the private part. I'm aware that most of you have heard these ayat and ahadith pertaining to marriage. And I don't want to base this talk repeating these ayat and ahadith. I know that you guys know this. Alhamdulillah, our brother Abu Atiyah, Sheikh Mahmood, and others have covered them in numerous talks or numerous lessons and lectures. What I want to do is concentrate more on the practical aspects and understanding the reality of marriage compared to what you perceive it to be. Whilst I go through this, whilst I go through this, I don't mind if you have anything to say. Please put your hand up, and we can take it from there. I'd rather this be a more of an interactive lesson rather than me just talk for you guys to listen. So if you want to say something, if it's a brother, put your hand up. If it's a sister, write it down and throw, and throw the paper onto the other side. One of the brothers will bring it uh, forward. So, I've jotted down or I've mentioned 20 points. 20 points, if you want, you can write them down. If you don't, labas, alhamdulillah. 20 points, practical aspects or that which is pertaining to marriage and I believe some of them are opinions, so you don't have to take them. They may not be, they may not be uh, important to you. However, this is the khulasa, the summary that I've come up with. And we can go on and on, but the time is short, so I've put them down to 20 points. And inshallah, bi'idhin azwajal, there's still some benefit from it. So point number one. Point number one, choosing a spouse upon deen. As Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تُنْكَحُ الْمَرْأَ لِأَرْبَعَ لِمَالِهَا وَلِحَسَبِهَا وَلِجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا فَاذْفُرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكَ A woman is married for four things, or for four. Her wealth, her lineage, her beauty and her deen. So choose the deen so that you may be prosperous. Choose the deen. And the reasons for choosing the deen are many. Who can tell me, anyone, who can tell me why, why choose the deen? So the ulama say it's permissible to choose other ones. People marry for other reasons. Those are the main ones that they use. Now obviously there's other reasons, but those are the main ones. And this is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned these four. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, choose the deen. Why say choose the deen? Who can tell me? Is there anyone? She will fear Allah Azza wa Jal regarding your rights. Naam. 
Anything else? Shoe aid you upon your dean? Yeah, okay. You can do righteous deeds together. Okay, Methelen, if you come to a dars, both, both of you come to a dars, Methelen, okay. Maybe from the aspect of the righteous. Nam, from the reasons of yani, righteous upbringing for the children. What else? Safeguard your hair after. Yeah, there's some aspects to that. It helps, no doubt, it does help. What about if something happens? So, for example, you, you get divorced. So, for example, something happens to you. What do you know? What do you gain from that? For example, if something happens between you and your spouse, you gain from that something. What? Huh? Uh, not necessarily life lessons, but we're talking about her dean. Why choose her as a... Uh, why mention dean? Yeah. In any conflict, all parties should fear Allah. In any conflict, all parties should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if you're not there... You know your children are what? Underneath a woman, the mother of your children who's righteous. So even if she's not happy with you, you know she's dealing with your children and your household in a righteous, from a righteous manner. Babe, that's number one. Choosing a spouse, uh, choosing a spouse upon deen. Number two, where do you find true happiness? Number two, where do you find true happiness? A person goes into marriage thinking they will find true happiness with their spouse and that is the wrong assumption or the wrong notion to go with in the first place. And there are many reasons for that. Because happiness is a fluctuating feeling. It goes up and down. Do you think it's plausible that your spouse will keep you happy 24-7? No. So true happiness is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in any situation you can attain reward and have tranquility in your heart. Any situation you can attain reward and have tranquility in your heart. So if a person is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter, no matter what trials that person goes through, they can have that connection with Allah jalla wa'ala and feel tranquil in their heart. But if you place your happiness with the spouse that you intend to get married to, or if you're married already, if you place all your true happiness, you base all your happiness on that spouse, then you're only going to hit... Uh, um, a brick wall. Because what if something happens to your spouse? Let's say your spouse, your spouse passes away or you get divorced like we mentioned. Does that mean now khalas, your happiness is gone? Because if you placed all your happiness with that particular person, that means now by default, you're ha you cannot be happy now. By default, you cannot be happy. I hope that's understood. If anyone doesn't understand that, I can mention. So also understanding that this is Darul Bala. This is a place of hardship. This is what the dunya is. So don't have that expectation that true happiness comes from your spouse or materialistic things. I'm not saying that your spouse can't make you happy. I hope no one's taking that from me. I'm not saying your spouse can, can't make you happy. They can. They make you happy. But I'm talking about true happiness, the happiness, that you connection that you should have with Allah Jalla wa'ala, you shouldn't put with, uh, on, on your spouse. I hope that's understood. That's point number two. Point number three. Marriage is not a fairy tale or Disney or Hollywood. Marriage is not a fairy tale or Disney or Hollywood. So no matter what you see or what you've seen or what you perceive it to be, it's not that. Marriage is a duty. It's building a unit. I mean, if you think about it, how were marriages throughout history? Ask yourself, throughout history, how were marriages? Did they have Disney? Did they have um, Hollywood and all these things? No, they didn't. So how did they have? How did they base their marriages? What did they base it on? So marriage is far greater than making yourself or making yourselves happy, especially when you have children. If you come into a marriage thinking, you know, I want to make myself happy. This is me. I'm gonna make myself happy. La, you're not gonna find it like that. You're gonna hit brick wall. It's okay if things go up and down. Marriage stay the same. Marriage. Don't stay the same. A marriage doesn't stay the same. It goes up and down. It fluctuates. The key is for both parties to work on it. That is the key. Both parties need to work on the marriage. Most marriages, and this is a very important point, Ikhwan and Akhawat, most marriages are average. Alhamdulillah, that's fine. That's okay. Most marriages are average. That's fine. So why are you looking for perfection? 
Why are you as a husband or you as a wife, why are you looking for perfection? Most marriages are average anyway. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Alhamdulillah, they're building the unit. Everyone is doing their bit. And khalas, it's average. You yourself, you're not perfect, so why are you looking for perfection? Hmm? Helping each other to get to Jannah. We hear this a lot. Uh, we're going to help each other, inshallah, to get to Jannah. Key word, helping. The key word in there is helping. You are helping one another. You're not there. It's not going to be like, you're going to help me, khalas, we're done, you done it for me. La. You're helping one another. You're both naqis. You're both deficient individuals. You have much to work on. And you always have much to work on. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Which leads me to a statement. And it's an amazing statement. The wider the gap between expectation and uh, and, uh, reality, the more problems occur. I'm going to say that again. The wider the gap between expectation and reality, the more problems are going to occur. If you put the, your expectation of marriage and the reality close to one another, then you have less problems. But if your expectations are this high and the reality is is somewhere else, then how many problems are you going to have right here in the middle? You're going to have problems, frustrations, all sorts. Hmm? For those who didn't catch that, the wider the gap between expectation and reality, the more problems occur. That's point number three. Number four. This is one for the sisters. What do you think, oh sisters, what do you think brothers want from you? And before I answer this, if there's any of the sisters that, that want to write this quick answer down, write this answer down. I'm giving you 30 seconds, inshallah, or one minute. Write this answer down and send it over. What do you think brothers want from you, generally, in a marriage? So if anyone can write that down and send that forth. Meanwhile, I can ask the brothers, what do you want from, 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 from a spouse? Who wants to answer for themselves? Because this question varies between brothers. You know, not everyone has the same standard, but there are underlying basic principles that we all kind of agree on. Who wants to answer this? Respect. Okay. Loving and caring? Really? Okay. I think he intends companionship. Companionship? Loving and caring? Okay. (laughs) All right. You want to answer that? Abby? Huh? We mentioned Dean already. That's the underline. That's point number one. Ah, so shy. Not Dean, Danny. Someone who's shy. Dave. Mm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait for them. That's good. You, you, um, is there? Does anyone? Did anyone answer from there? Uh, can you just bring them forth so we can carry on, inshallah? Okay. One sister wrote respect and haya. Okay, respect is definitely a big thing. Respect is definitely a big thing. Is there any other? None. Okay, probably not anymore, yeah? One of the main things that men or brothers want from women, and any man who's been married or newly married or has been married for a while, they know this, is peace. What we want most from sisters is peace. We don't want a headache. We don't want a headache. Just peace. If we can get peace from you, alhamdulillah, we're happy. We don't even ask for much. Peace. That's what we want. Respect is a big thing. Respect and peace, they go hand in hand. If you can respect me as a man or as your husband and you can bring peace to my life, that's all I want, alhamdulillah. And I think I can speak on behalf, on behalf of many brothers. The rest of the things will go into place. But if there's no respect and no peace, you're going to give me a headache. And the reason why I say peace is so important, I'm going to tell you why. Peace is so important because it's already hard for a man to be outside to provide protect, make money, do whatever we can to, to give you security and do the best we can for you and look after the, your house, the household that we have. It's so hard in this society to do that already. The last thing we need is to come home for someone not to give us peace. But if you can give that peace, we have a safe haven now to go to. 
We have something we feel good to go to. So when we're outside going through all those struggles and then come back home and we sit with you and you feel you give, you're giving us that peace, Alhamdulillah, we're going to feel good. I hope that's understood. Point number five. Understanding the difference between beginning of marriage and years later. Understanding between or understanding the difference between the beginning of marriage and years later. What do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? Anyone who's married knows what I mean by this. The way you, a man is before marriage or beginning of marriage, it's very hard for him to be the same after marriage, like after years later. So what tends to happen is a woman may be like, oh, you're not the same as you were at the beginning. You're not the same as you were before. You're not, you're, you and acting like, how, how come you're different now? Why have you changed? But no, it's not that he's changed. Men generally are not the same. Men generally are not the same as the, uh, uh, in the beginning than they are later. Why? Because now you are comfortable with each other and you've got to a certain point with each other. So as, so if you, as a woman, if you can understand that and know, okay, he's not the same as you were because, you know, the buzz before you, when you first get married, you got a buzz there. Now the buzz is not there anymore. That doesn't mean that your marriage is over. It doesn't mean that you no longer like each other. No, it doesn't mean that. Now you have to look at consistencies. You have to look at that which is consistent from both parties of how to deal with each other and keep that moving slowly, slowly, alhamdulillah, and just maintain that all the way. When, you, when the fire burns, like buzzing, when you buzz so high with a high intensity, it's going to go down. But if you keep a consistent base, then inshallah khair, it'll be fine after that. So that's number five. Number six, love language. Who knows what I mean by love language? Okay, yeah. So, if you as a woman or you as a man, if you have a certain way to show your love, do not expect that your partner or your husband or your wife shows the same love back, the same way love back. So, for example, if you are the type of person is you like to say things a lot, I love you, I miss you, I care about you, I do all these things. You say, you're saying these things. Don't expect your partner to say the same things back because that's, maybe that's not how, the way they show th their love. They may show their love by maybe buying gifts, like the brother mentioned. They may show love by doing actions. And I'll tell you something, Akhawat. Most of the brothers, the way they show their love is by actions. So for example, if they go and buy you, if they go do something for you, that's the, them showing their love. If they do X, Y, and Z, Z, or A, B, C, that's them showing their love. So if you're like, oh, why doesn't he say this to me? Why hasn't he said this to me? Because you're so used to saying it a, a certain way, or you say it, that doesn't mean he doesn't love you or he doesn't care about you. He's just showing you a different way. Likewise, it goes both ways. So if you can understand how your spouse is showing their love, then you've understood, okay, alhamdulillah, that person shows me love, that person loves me, and this is how they show it. And it goes both ways and you have to understand each other of how they show their love. Otherwise, what tends to happen is that oh, this, you, you start to assume, oh, this person don't care about me, they don't care about me, they don't even, you know? Yes, that person can try and show, do other things. So, so for example, if they don't use words as much, they can try, you know? But don't demand it, you know? You prefer that, you like that because that's how you do it, but don't demand it. Because if you demand, then you have high expectations. And when you have high expectations, you probably won't get the results you want. And that doesn't mean anything because they actually do care about you and they're showing it in different ways. I hope that's understood. Number seven, assumptions kill relationships. Assumptions kill relationships. Assuming, thinking, assuming what they're thinking, assuming what they're doing, read, thinking that we don't read minds. We're not, we're not able to read minds. So stop assuming that your spouse is thinking this or doing this. Stop assuming these things. When you assume, you expect results a certain way. When you assume from your spouse, you expect results a certain way. And that's why assumptions, they kill relationships. Don't do that. If you have a problem, you can speak to each other nicely. Ask each other. And don't assume. If, they, if they're going to say it to you, they'll say it to you, inshallah. But don't assume. That's number seven. Number eight. Managing arguments properly and continuing the duty. Managing arguments properly and continuing 
duty. What do I mean by this? Does anyone know? What do I mean by managing arguments properly and continuing by this? Who can who can say something? That, that's that's possible. Anything else? Barakatik, Zakalakh. That is what that is definitely half of what I'm trying to say. If you have a disagreement, now there's ways to deal with it. I can give you my opinion how to deal with it, and someone else may give you another opinion. But when you have disagreements, one thing that shouldn't stop is duty. So, for example, if your wife cooks for you, if your wife cooks for you and she has disagreed with you, now she's no longer going to cook, cook for you. Nope, you've upset me now. I'm not going to make you breakfast. You've upset me now. I'm not going to make you lunch or dinner because you've upset me. My sister, even if he's upset you or whatever the situation is, do not let that hinder you from your duty. Don't forget, marriage is a duty. It's also a duty. There's, there, there's, and what kind of message are you sending towards the children when you do this? So don't let that stop you. Do your duty. Still cook your, the food or whatever it is that he likes. Still do that. Even if you're upset. Don't worry, inshallah. Because if the man says, you know what? I'm today, you've upset me today. So you know what? I'm not going to work today. I'm not going to do shopping. I'm not going to go here and there. And I'm not going to provide and protect you today. Or you know what? When I walk with you on the street, you've upset me today. So if someone tries on you, tries to do something silly, I don't feel like protecting you today. I don't feel like protecting you today. Would that be fair? La, it's not fair. You still have a duty to protect your wife. Even though she's upset you, you still have a duty to protect your wife. Likewise, you, my sister, you have a duty as well. That which your husband likes, or because you know you have to have ba'a, obedience, and khair, you still have to do that. Even if he's upset you. And that's part of like what the brother said, is part of the continuing the duty and managing arguments properly. Then you can deal with whatever issue you have. And one thing I'd say, which I've learned for myself, is that if you argue with your spouse, try, not, try to not let this go days on end where you, are not, where, you, where you are not talking to each other and khalas, you just put it aside. Try to deal with it nicely. Even if you're, if you're angry at the time, no problem. Take a break. But then, Talk about it and deal with it. That's all, that's what I would suggest. Again, that is my opinion. You don't have to take it. Uh, that's that's fine. But that's what I've seen and Allah, Allah knows best. That's number eight. Number nine. Gender roles and the truth behind it. Number nine is gender roles and the truth behind it. Who, who knows what I'm talking about here? Gender roles and the truth behind it. What am I trying to say? Fadalah. Naam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى The man is not like the woman. Huh? The man is not like the woman. So, there is gender roles. It's there. So don't let anyone come to you, even though we're in this time where people are going to come and say, La, there's, no fat, there's no difference between a man and a woman. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying, and I hope this is clear, I'm not saying that a woman cannot do certain things. So for example, I'm not saying a woman is haram for a woman to work. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying certain things. I'm not saying it's haram for a woman to drive a car or whatever, or whatever the situation is, according to whatever, but I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that if you do not understand as a woman your role and you try to compete with your husband and try to have the same role as your husband, what tends to happen is you are going to lose respect for your husband. Whether you like it or not, even if you say to yourself, no, 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 la, la, this is my way. It's 50 50. Kama yuqal. It's 50 50. This is what's going on now. It's 50 50. If you say 50 50, fine, but what's going to happen is this sooner or later will not work. The long term will not work. Because why? You will not have the same respect for your husband because you are now become, unfortunately, you have, you have taken the role of a man. To that point where you don't respect your husband anymore because it's 50 50. Sah? You don't respect his, his authority. Right? We could, this needs much more talk with regards to this, but inshallah, we just touch upon that. So, like I said, I'm not saying it's haram to do certain things, but what I'm saying is that there's a hierarchy in the household, and a man is supposed to be the leader, and the woman follows and she helps and she does everything else, and the woman, and the man will look after her, and the woman will respect him. 
I hope that's clear, inshallah. If there's anything, then someone can mention it later on, inshallah. Number 10. Number 10. Worst thing a woman can do is emasculate a man. One of the worst things a woman can do is emasculate a man. A man needs to be a leader in his household. If a man cannot feel like a leader, if he does not feel like a leader in his own household, it's a recipe for disaster. If you think you can emasculate your husband in his own house and make him feel low and make him feel like you're not a man, then it's a recipe for disaster. Now, so the man needs to be a leader in his household. Now, at the same time, even though the man needs to be a leader in the household, does not, that does not mean you as a man, you can just sit there, not do anything, and say, guess what, I want to be a leader. But you're not acting like a leader yourself anyway. Do not demand to be a leader in the household when you are not acting like a leader yourself as a man. You have no right to demand that if you yourself, you're not acting like a leader yourself. I hope that's clear. Allah, you better speak. Number 11. De-escalating commands and demands to preferences. De-escalating commands and demands to preferences. So, if you don't get what you want, you will be able to react better because in your mind, it was a preference rather than a demand. Do people understand that? De-escalating your demands to preferences. So, for example, if you keep demanding certain things and you don't get those things, you're going to react a certain way that's not praiseworthy. But if those demands are de-escalated, have gone down to preferences, like, you know, I prefer that if you did this, or I prefer it this way, then your reaction, if he didn't do it, or she didn't do it, then the reaction won't be as bad. But if it's demands, and you're commanding that particular action to be done or said, and it's not done, then you become, you become angry, and you, 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 you react a, a, a worse way than it was if it was preferences. Does anybody, does everyone understand that? Yeah? Number 12. Women are emotional beings generally. And we, and we as men tend to be more rational. So us brothers have to sit back and think the way we deal with our wives is not the same as how we deal with each other. The way we deal with our wives is not the same as we deal with each other. So sometimes women may act out. They may act out due to whatever reason. We have to learn to how to deal with it. From them is not to react to everything that has been said or done. So when a woman says something or does something, we, can't, we don't have to react to everything that is said and done. Because we've got to remember, they are more emotional and we are more rational. Generally, typically. So we can't react to every single thing. And if you look at the Prophet wasallam, when Aisha radiallahu anha, she threw the plate, you know the story, yeah? When she threw the plate or the any, any bowl, when she threw it, what did the Prophet wasallam do? Who can tell me? Huh? He just smiled. Did he react? Did he say something? He smiled. Why did he smile? What did the ulama say? Why did he smile? He smiled because they knew that this is the nature of women. That they may react sometimes. Because of their emotions, they may react sometimes. But the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wallahi, we can, and it's so hard to do this as a man, not to react. Because our nature is, we, we, have, we have this anger within us. So we want to say something, we want to do something. But the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quite smiled and they understood this is the nature of women. This is the nature of women. And this is just an example. But we need to put this and take this in our lives. We don't have to react to every single thing a woman or a wife says or does. Every single thing we have to react. In fact, Sheikh Abdul Salam al shuair one of the ulama, he said, when you go to your household, he said, when you go to your household, he said, when you're outside, you're Asid. You're a beast, you're a lion. But when you go to your household, yani chill. sometimes you have to have Something we call taghafal. Sometimes you have to have something called taghafal, which is some heedlessness. You see something in the house that maybe you're not really pleased with. I don't know, maybe your wife didn't clean up something, for example. Or maybe she didn't finish the dishes or something. Or maybe she didn't do something that didn't please you. Yani, you don't have to go mad and get, go crazy over this. You don't have to say something about this. You don't have to react to it. Yani, have some taghafal, yani, as if you didn't see it. You know what I mean? Because if you do this, you start to imprint yourself whereby you 
you just comment on every single thing and you say every single thing. You have to say something and that's not the way. Because if you do that, what happens is you open up the door for her to do the same to you. And even if she does do, that same, same, do the same to you, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do that. Baby Juan, so stop persisting for your wife to be as rational as you. Stop persisting your wife to be as rational as you. Because their nature is not the same as yours. Babe, number 13. Being nice to your wife, which is connected to the last point. Be nice to your wife. Be nice to your wife, man. Be nice to your wife. Say good things. يعني, live with them nicely. If you know they're like this anyway, live with your wife nicely. Is there any harm with that? Any problem with that? No. Number 14. Understanding communication and compromising. For example, a brother comes home, ignores his wife. His wife says, you fool, you idiot, or whatever. Or names, calling names, calling him names. That situation compared to he comes home, does the same thing, but his wife takes a different approach. And she's like, okay, he's mad about something. When he feels like communicating, I'm here. So he can even, she can even say that. When, inshallah, I know you're mad. Love us. When you feel like communicating, here. Compare that to when, you, when she's reacting, oh, you're this, you're this, you're that. That's not going to help the situation. It's only going to ignite something. This gives him something to work on. This gives him something to work on rather than calling him names. Number 15. Mind your own business. Number 15. Mind your own business. Are you yourself fulfilling your rights as a man? Are you yourself fulfilling your rights as a woman? Stop concentrating too much on your spouse's right or rights and more about your own duties. Don't worry about your spouse's duties, what they're doing, whether they're narcos or not, or whether they're deficient in what they're doing. Concentrate on your own. You concentrate too much on your spouse and you forget yourself. Know that you yourself, you're a narcos. You yourself, you're deficient. And with this, stop looking at other people's relationships. Other people, other couples. Oh, Fulan. Oh, her husband does this. Oh, his wife does this. Don't worry about that. Stop looking at other people's relationships. Concentrate on your own. And also with that, stop looking at social media. Full of lies. It's an illusion. Social media is teaching an illusion. Wow, look at this uh, power couple. Stop looking at this. In, in, in between the, behind the walls, Allah what they're going through. So don't look at that stuff. Number 16. Focus on the good and be grateful. Focus on the good and be grateful. We all have mistakes. Let's focus on the good. When you look at your wife or when you look at your husband, see the khair that he's doing. See the khair that she's doing. Focus on those things. You're not going to get perfection. Focus on those things. Say alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. <coughs> and when you both sit down and see to yourself, okay, how do I improve myself? Don't say, oh, my husband, how do you improve yourself? You should improve yourself like this. Don't say, my wife, you know what? You need to improve yourself this. La. You can both sit down and say, you know, I'm going to look, list my own problems and say, you know what? I'm going to see how can I improve myself. You, my wife, you can list your problems. I'm not going to tell you. What do you think you can improve for yourself? That's an amazing way. Babe. Number 17, stop fantasizing about divorce. Stop fantasizing about divorce. Every little thing we want out, especially when there's children. Every little thing we want out, oh, look, look, I'm gone. No, no, I'm, I'm done. No, no, I'm, I'm done with this situation. I'm gone. Especially for sisters. Have you seen the stats with regards to marriage? This time we are the lowest rates of marriage right now. Marriage is the, it has, it's, it's the, at the lowest in history right now of marriage. People do not want to be married. Now, lowest in history. Divorce rates are at the highest in history. Why? There's so many aspects that come to this. Stop fantasizing about divorce. My sister, if you're going to leave because of one, two things, oh, 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 I'm, I'm out, I'm gone, I'm leaving. You have children. But no, 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 I don't care, I'm leaving. Hey, you forgot about your children? You think marriage is about you only? Marriage is not only about you. 
Marriage is not only about you, oh uh, man, husband. This is a unit you're building. There's children here. Have you seen the stats with regards to children that, that, that uh, uh, grow up in single mother households? Majority of the people in prison, they come from single mother households. Have you seen the stats with regards to that? Think carefully before. So stop fantasizing about divorce. Men and women. I'm just, I'm just giving it, I'm leaving it out there. And if you're a woman, you say, you know what, this brother, who is the father of my children, uh, he's like this, like this, I don't like it, blah, blah, blah. If he's generally an okay guy, but you're like, you're looking for any small thing and you're like, oh, I'm gone, forget this guy. You're going to forget this guy. But let me give you a reality check, my sister. You forget this guy, no problem. You're going to find another guy? You, you now have children. You're going to find another guy? Okay, let's say you find another guy. He's going to be different to the first guy? I want to give you a reality check, man. A lot of the, a lot of, a lot of the men, they, they have similar traits anyway. You're going you, you to find another guy? And you're going to bank on that guy that he's going to be good to you. And your children. That's not his children, by the way. And your children. He's going to be good to you as well? Think carefully. Stop fantasizing about divorce. Jazakumullah khairan. Number 18. Keeping away from negative people and influences. Keeping away from negative people and influences. Don't share your marital uh, issues to everyone. Don't share your marital uh, uh, um, uh, issues to everyone. So keep away from negative people and influences. So if you have people around you always talking negative about marriage, always talking negative, you know yourselves. And the sisters, you know yourselves. Every, especially if the sisters hang around with divorced sisters. I'm not saying all of them. or what, they, they can tend to do this. Give you some nasahe that are incorrect just to get you out. So think carefully of what kind of people that are around you. So don't keep away from negative people and influences. Number 19, not forgetting your identity when you get married. Not forgetting your identity when you get married. You can still do certain things after marriage as long as you are dutiful to your husband. So, if, so my sister, if you feel like I'm going to get married, but I'm going to lose my identity, ma'naha, my, the meaning behind this is like, you're no longer going to do certain things. You can still do certain things when you're married too. As long as you're dutiful to your husband, you can still do that because I, I, I noticed a lot of sisters go into marriage, they forget their identity, and then all of a sudden, they forget their identity, and then all of a sudden, uh, khalas, they're lost. They feel depressed, they feel wrong, they feel sad. No, no one's telling you to do that. Inshallah khair, you can still do certain things, and inshallah your husband can understand this, as long as it's khair, halal, everything's fine, and you're dutiful towards him, alhamdulillah. With that, staying healthy, hygienic, staying healthy, hygienic, Keeping fit and not letting go of yourselves. This is an opinion. Don't have to take it. It might be rubbish to you. It might not make sense to you. You might think, oh, no. I'm just saying from experience and what I know from people. Staying healthy, hygienic, keeping fit and not letting go of yourself. Brothers get married. Khalas, let go. He's not active. He's not bothered. He's lazy. Sisters get married. She lo- she, she's letting go of herself. She's not keeping... Healthy, you're not keeping fit. You can do stuff at home. You're not keeping fit. You're not doing any of these things. And then you're thinking, oh, why is my husband not really bothered with me? Well, he's not bothered with you because you let yourself go. Why is my wife not really, يعني, you know, she's not looking at me like the same? Because my brother, you've let go. You, you haven't put her on her toes. You're still let, you, you think you've got married and now you, you can, it's done. You've been lazy. La, keep yourself active. Keep yourself on point. You know, keep yourself on point. So that's just an advice. You can take it, not take it. La bats, that's just an opinion. It can be rejected. Like I said, some of the stuff is opinions. Number 20. Last advice, number 20. I've left a khulasa of 20 points for, ma- for marriage expectations or managing expectations in marriage. Number 20. Advice to the sisters. It might be off topic or it can be connected, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Advice to sisters not to get put off if their husbands or brothers talk about multiple wives with their friends. My advice is, to sisters, don't get put off if your husband or other brothers, they talk to each other about multiple wives. Don't get put off. Don't get put off by this. For many reasons. For many reasons. One of the reasons is, men are polygamous by nature. They may not tell you this, they may lie to you. They might not even tell you this. Especially if you're newly married. They won't tell you this. They're scared. If they tell you, they may lose you. 
So they don't want to tell you this. Men are polygamous by nature. That's how it is. Now, does that mean they're going to act upon it? Oh, guess what? Because he's polygamous by nature, he's going to find himself three wives, four wives. La, he understands that it's a hard thing to do. He knows it's a hard thing to do. So he may talk about it. Brothers will talk about it for five years, 10 years, 15 years. They'll still talk about it. Doesn't mean he's going to act upon it. That's one thing. Number two, does not mean that he will love you less. Does not mean that he loves you less. But even him talking about this does not mean that he loves you less. Because when he said, Men are not like women. So a man can talk about this and still keep you high, regard you highly or keep you high and have so much love for you. This is the reality. I'm here to speak the reality and, and, and say how it is. Some people might like it. Some people might not like it. But I'm here to say the reality of the situation. Not all brothers are going to tell you this, especially the young brothers. They won't tell you this. Me, I'm not interested. I'm going to say it. I'm just reporting. So I'm going to say how it is. This is the reality. If anyone believes I'm wrong or what I'm saying is batil, you can mention it to me and let me know, inshallah. Allah barafiq and we'll stop there with regards to this with the 20 points this is the khulasa wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nimbina muhammad uh, we're gonna pray isha now and there's some questions so I will answer the questions straight after isha jazakumullah khairan